Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. This is a special episode of Energy Talks called Digital Transformation in the Power Industry. It is one of a series of monthly episodes on this topic in which we will learn about the steps to take in making a successful digital transformation to meet changing market requirements. In part one, my guests will share their general outlooks and insights into this topic. For example, what steps to take now to positively impact power system testing in the future. So without further delay, I would like to introduce Juan Carlos Sanchez, a member of the Omicron product management team. He has studied computer science and is passionate about technology, innovation, and digital transformation. Hi, Juan Carlos. A big welcome to Energy Talks. Thank you, Scott. It is a pleasure to be here today and talk with you about the digital transformation. Also joining me for this discussion is Martin Fahner, one of the original founders of Omicron and product manager for Omicron's primary test manager, also known as PTM Software. Martin has joined us before as a guest at Energy Talks for discussions about centralized and cloud-based software solutions for power system testing. Hello, Martin. Welcome back to Energy Talks. It's a pleasure for me as well to be here. Welcome to our audience. I'm looking forward to discuss uh, the digital transformation in the context of the power industry today with you. Thank you both for being here with me for this discussion. Juan Carlos, let me start with you. What is meant by digital transformation? Well, the digital transformation is the use of modern digital technologies to solve problems or improve uh, business processes. In many cases, the digital transformation changes uh, how to create or even to deliver the value. Digitalization is the transformation of analog information into digital. The digital transformation, on the other hand, uh, adapt or even redesign sometimes uh, complete processes to, to the new technologies. It is also a cultural change that requires companies to change the way their job gets done. It is very important to be aware of this because digital transformation can uh, completely reshape, in some cases, the existing and well-established processes. Juan Carlos, when you mention modern or new digital technologies, to clarify this, what are these new technologies? Are they not already in widespread use, even in the power industry? Yeah, digital technologies are, for example, software systems that uh, store and process the data. Cloud computing is a good example. Uh, the cloud helps to store the data, ensuring that it is safe, that there are regular backups, and that the data it is accessible when uh, needed. To process the data, there are other technologies like the machine learning technologies that help to extract insights from your data. In our industry, that will mean that uh, thanks to, for example, the cloud computing or the machine learning, maintenance process could be optimized, saving time, reusing existing data, avoiding manual mistakes, entering the data a second time, and also very important, it will help to extract insights from, for example, measurement results that can help to better understand the condition of uh, an asset and therefore make better decisions and maximize the reliability of assets. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Martin, do you have anything to add to this? From the point of view of digital technologies, there are really multiple technologies available. I'll take one example, big data. <laughs> so using data from different data sources, whether it's the smart meters, uh, online sensors, or even social media, or mobile solutions, uh, as another, another example. And to bring all this together to improve the customer satisfaction or increase the business performance or reliability of a power supply, uh, these are the challenges we are facing. Martin, why is digital transformation important in the power industry? I think the digital transformation is important for the power industry because the customer uh, behavior and the customer expectations are changing. And the digital solutions are helping to uh, 
to tailor the products and services uh, to these changing customer needs. And we have uh, two factors driving this. Uh, the, the new customer behavior and needs require technical innovation. And sometimes there are technical innovations uh, that create new customer behavior. Taken as example, uh, electrical cars. Now the customer can say, I want to participate and I offer my car as a storage device for energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not possible years ago. Martin, what do you mean when you say technical innovation results from and is changing customer behavior? What is your experience with this? We best look at some of examples. Uh, take uh, photovoltaic systems. If a customer just has his own photovoltaic system, then he becomes to be a, a electricity producer and an active player in this uh, field. Uh, as well, smartphones, there is a technical innovation there and the, this changes the customer expectations that he wants to have the data about his energy consumption av available anytime on his smartphone. Not anymore waiting for the monthly uh, bill <laughs> telling him his consumption. Very good. Uh, Martin, thank you. Juan Carlos, in your opinion, how should the digital transformation start in the power industry? Well, the digital transformation should always begin with a problem, an opportunity, and a clear goal. The main motivation why the digital transformation starts is different for every organization. It might be to improve the customer experience or to increase the efficiency, to support the decision making, or in some cases to improve or accelerate the innovation that the company can provide. In the power industry, one example will be a digital transformation that has as a goal uh, to maximize the reliability of assets. Juan Carlos, you mentioned earlier that digital transformation can reshape or create new work groups. What does this look like in the power industry? To be successful with the digital transformation, it is important to create a culture of teamwork and break down the functional or geographic uh, silos. One of the reasons why many initiatives fail is because part of the company is used to establish its processes that don't have dependencies with other departments. This is a challenge that all companies face. In the power industry, there are additional ones, such cyber security or established regulations that need to be adapted to the new processes. Juan Carlos, thank you. Martin, what is your opinion about how the power industry should view and take advantage of digital transformation? I think from an attitude, they just should accept the change because it's taking place anyhow and go into a leading position. They should see the digital transformation as a big chance to create new business opportunities and to strengthen customer relationships. They should do it in a proactive way and with a strong customer orientation, doing it together with their customers, I think will uh, create, uh, create new innovations. Okay. Martin, is the digital transformation a technological change? For sure, technology is uh, involved in it. And, uh, but I see that technology is more uh, an enabler, but uh, never the driver of this digital transformation. Some of the organizations see the digital transformation as the digitalization of all their data and the move of their software to the cloud. But this is not the core of digital transformation. Okay. You say that technology should not be the driver of digital transformation. What should then be the drivers in such a change? I think uh, putting the customer in the focus, I think the cha changing customer needs uh, requiring new solutions. They should be a driver and uh, the drive to increase the customer satisfaction and customer binding. As well, another driver, uh, the need to push the business performance or system reliability. And I think uh, uh, as well, the opportunity to create new business models can be a strong driver for the transformation. 
Martin, it was mentioned uh, before the example of cloud-based power system testing solutions. How do these work and what benefits do they present users? Uh, at the core, there is, of course, a, a central data repository making data available for the involved people in the whole testing process, uh, wherever they are, anytime. So it's uh, for the tester in the test preparation, being on-site in the substation, having all asset data available, having uh, uh, all the testing templates available, uh, getting direct feedback uh, after the test uh, regarding the, the data quality, and as well, uh, algorithms uh, for the assessment, uh, all this in, is involved and uh, it improves uh, very much the, the quality of the testing data. And it helps as well to reduce uh, testing time to a great extent. Okay. What other tools are useful for a digital transformation? I think the availability of tools is manifold. And selecting the fitting ones depends uh, pretty much on the focus of the digital transformation strategy of the individual player in the field. If we take mobile solutions as an example, they can greatly increase the customer experience and at the same time, the efficiency of a service team in the substation. Taking another example, the big data analysis can give deeper insights into customer behavior or as well allow an optimization uh, of the potentials of a power system. Thank you, Martin. Juan Carlos, what role does data play in the digital transformation? That's a good question. Uh, data and digital transformation create a virtuous cycle that pushes innovation. More data creates the need of new digital technologies and these new digital products and technologies at the same time create more data. In the last century, machines and engines supported the human muscle power. And now with the digital transformation and data analysis, the human brain power is supported. When analog information is uh, digitalized, data is created. And after everything is digitalized, the creation of data will not stop because the new digital tools create huge amounts of data as well. The number of devices provided with sensors is also increasing in the market. Those devices create data about the status of the device, about the status of uh, uh, change in the manufacturer. And in some cases, there are also actuators that uh, can trigger actions according to the recorded data. What it is important is that a good data management is always crucial to be successful with the digital transformation. Okay. Martin, in your opinion, what does a good data management strategy look like? There are many elements of a good data strategy. Basically, I would say it's a, a data strategy is a long-term guiding plan to solve the data problems uh, of a company and support the business goals. And the, this plan, it's not only about technology, it, it includes the people, the processes and the technology. And uh, has many elements. I think we could fill a complete podcast with this. <laughs> uh, first element, of course, uh, is are the business requirements. So uh, what do we want to achieve with, with, with the data? So what, uh, what are the goals? And if uh, that's clear, then look, where are the data? Are they available already? So what, uh, how to source and gather the data is, a, is an element of it. Then of course, where to store them? Where is my single source of truth for which kind of data? Uh, involved in the data strategy as well, the technology and infrastructure requirements, uh, what's needed uh, to, to achieve this. And then, uh, and this uh, is an experience of the past with early monitoring systems. Uh, quite often, uh, a, a lot of data silos were produced and then the data was just uh, <laughs> not used uh, anywhere. So looking into the topic, how to turn the data into insights. So what algorithms are, used, uh, are needed? 
which data are required, how to transform them, what are the algorithms. Very crucial from my point of view as well is look at the people and processes. So uh, uh, who are the people involved, who is producing the data, who is uh, uh, then processing the data, who should have access to the data, and looking as well uh, uh, at the processes. Do the existing processes fit? Do they have to be adapted? And I could go on. As an example, the data governance uh, is, a, is an important topic. Uh, but I think uh, <laughs> let's uh, leave it so far for this time. We will have future podcasts uh, going more into depth. Very good. Martin, how is Omicron currently helping its customers make a smooth digital transformation? Our focus, uh, of course, is uh, around the testing process because uh, this is uh, what our main uh, product and solutions do, providing testing solutions. And around this, we provide all the tools needed for the digital transformation of the testing process in electrical power systems. And this includes the test preparation, optimized and guided performance of the tests, data validation of test results, the result analysis and assessment of results, reporting, and of course, later post-processing. And <clears throat> important element there, a central data repository for all relevant asset data and the whole testing history being available both for the tester, the, the maintenance or asset manager, or the data scientists within the company. In summary, could both of you please tell me the most important points we should remember from this episode to motivate us all to embrace digital transformation? Martin, what is your opinion? I think we are in an exciting phase of changes in our industry. And I think it's important to take the chance and create new business opportunities out of them, resulting in excited customers, improved power systems, and better business results. Do this step-by-step -step in an HL approach and close interactions with your employees and customers. Juan Carlos, what is your opinion? The goal of the Digital Transformation Initiative needs to be clear before it starts, or as Martin said, it needs to start with a clear business opportunity. Afterwards, it is important to use the right technologies and the right products to achieve those goals. It is also important to embrace the changes and create a culture of teamwork to break down uh, the data silos. Even if the benefits are not always visible uh, in the short term, it is um, worth to do it for the mid and the long term. Juan Carlos, what can our listeners expect to learn from upcoming episodes about digital transformation in the power industry? We will talk about the uh, typical challenges with the digital transformation. For example, data quality issues. We will also talk about data validation and recommendations for condition assessments. Well, we're looking forward to it. Juan Carlos and Martin, thank you both very much for sharing your thoughts for this part of discussions about digital transformation in the power industry. Thank you very much, Scott. It was a pleasure for me to be here today. And thank you also to our listeners. I enjoyed it as well very much. I think it's a, a fascinating topic to discuss. Well, thank you both very much for being here with me to start these discussions. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We always welcome your questions and feedback. Simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks, as well as future episodes about digital transformation in the power industry. Goodbye for now, everyone.